guys, my name is Alex Parham, and today we are doing a review on the Dragorazi DRX. For starters, I never thought there'd be a world in which I would be reviewing a Dragorazi, let alone having a lot nice to say about it. So the DRX is the Dragorazi's 10th boat, Roman numeral X, and you know, for a brand that started with uh, a lot of be honest kind of funky designs and never really got a following this is a winner the drx might be the highest rockered highest performing displacement boat ever made now there aren't a lot of people who in this day and age kind of in their mind's eye picture their dream boat as being a displacement hull and that's a mistake we paddled displacement hulls for a really, really long time before basically the 9R changed the game and we really started wanting these edgy go fast boats. The DRX is sort of a culmination of a lot of the things that we learned over decades of building really high performance creek boats. It brings back the Nomad, the Stomper, those really awesome rock bashing boats, but you have got kind of a kick rockered, really dry bow, super high performance take on that old style of boating. Put together, you get this boat that allows you to swing it from the hips, put it really hard on edge to do like leaner booths, pull super far back in your booths to land incredibly flat and do all of that while not going Mach 3. You can take your time, get super crispy, awesome performance out of this thing and, you know, not have to do it while rushing through. So that sort of takes some of the technicality off of what would otherwise be, you know, the same move done maybe a little differently. The fact that the DRX is doing all of these things without obvious kick rocker, big chines, this is, you know, proof and concept of something I've been saying for a while, and I love it. What you get is a level of forgiveness, a level of predictability, especially in low water, and it really just, with the outfitting in it, where the rocker is set, you can do basically no stroke boofs. It is incredibly easy in this boat to land so, so flat. But because you don't have a big flat surface that you're landing on when you land super flat, it doesn't slam your back. In terms of what it feels like to paddle this boat, you will definitely be reminded of the Machno, especially the Machno Large paddling the DRX. Why? Because this is definitely a large size boat. There is now a DRS that is the small version. Also, if you want this in a half slice, they make what's called the Kush. Hopefully this year we'll have some of those kicking around because I'm super stoked after paddling this one. The Dragorazi outfitting has changed quite a bit since the last time I messed with one. So it essentially is a Waka kit. That's what you'll recognize this as. It has similar thigh hooks, similar seat. The only real difference is that the seat connection is different. It connects through side bolts in the chine of the boat. Don't love that, but you know, this boat in particular is a, an old demo. It has been put to war and back and uh, it hasn't cracked. So at least for this one, the concept works. Now, a lot of what I've talked about so far is mink boating. And that is definitely what I have chosen to do with this because it makes perfect sense for it. Micro creaking, bashing down rocks, low water, all of that stuff, this thing eats alive. Could you take it into big water? Yes, definitely. I mean, the same way that we took the Nomads and the Machnos and everything that came before them into big water, you for sure can do that in this. Would something with a harder chine help? Yeah but this boat is already a very good generalist, so it's not like you're leaving much on the table. So is there something that just doesn't do well? Well, obviously any time that you paddle a full-on displacement boat, especially one that is just built to be a mink tank like this, 
you're going to leave some sportiness on the table. It's not super fast just because it has so much rocker. And, you know, it. it's a big boat and you kind of feel that. So it is really fun in how easy it makes the moves to do that, let's say, are mandatory. But you probably aren't going to find yourself catching extra eddies, doing attainments, those sort of little things in this boat because, you know, it's sort of a tank. It's not as fun to do that. That said, what this boat would be brilliant for is if you need a warm blanket, if you need a little bit of help getting out there, getting comfortable, rock bashing, running your first waterfalls, doing stuff like that, this thing's going to really go a long way towards taking care of you. You're going to learn how to use both your uh, hip swing and your knees to steer the boat. Learn a lot of little things along the way that'll help you going forward in your career. And like I said, this one has been through the absolute ringer. And because there are no hard chines or anything like that, when you do bang off rocks or let's say you swim or something like that, these rounder displacement hull boats have a really good history of taking a lot of abuse. So are you going to see me paddling more of this boat? Well, this one in particular is kind of the end of its life, but I think that the DRX is an incredible confidence boat. This would really be one of my top choices for micro creaking season, big waterfalls, just big runs where I want everything to go smoothly and especially if I need to land flat. One of the just party tricks that this boat has is because of the long, long, high rocker of the stern. It is so easy to, when you pull your boost stroke, pull all the way past your butt and just watch the boat lift and land bow up or flat. I don't think I've seen a boat that was this easy to do that in since the Narvana. But unlike the Machno, the Narvana, a lot of those things where you know, weight is sort of a factor in how they're manufacturing these boats. These guys don't seem to care. This thing is heavy. It is brutish. And the fact that you can do that same level of just manual pull your bow up in a boat that weighs a bunch more is super cool. And, you know, honestly, it means the boat's going to last longer, which I'm all for. My only real reservation with this boat right now is that Without cutting into them, I can't tell if those black handles are actually reinforced with any amount of metal. You can see that some are stretched long, some are pinched short. This is similar to how Waka used to do their handles when they were just solid plastic. These ones have a washer and more reinforcement underneath, so at least the theory of the plastic handles that, that Waka was presenting would work better in this application, but... You know, call me old fashioned, I want a metal grab handle in case I ever have to extract that boat. Overall, I loved this thing. You know, they come out of the same factory as the Waka OGs. And I have to say for two boats that are basically the same length, have almost the same amount of rocker, they couldn't be more different while being so similar. It's absolutely incredible how you can do all of the same things in either of these boats, but just the flavor, the personality, of both the boat and the paddler that it's looking for are so different. This thing, by comparison, is going to be really for those of you who like getting down and dirty in the make, want to be able to do hairpin turns, want to throw it around, always, always, always get your boof like those good old days in the stomper. Yeah, that's what this is about. The OG, that's that other stuff. This thing is just so good at what it does. It really brings me back to the first time when I was in college and a much smaller human being and I paddled the Stomper 90 for the first time when I should have been in a Stomper 70. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is where we're going. This is like the Stomper 110 with a tune-up. It's just sick. You do, like the Stomper, have a lot of the same trade-offs. You're not going to be going screaming fast. You're going to be kind of charging at lines and waiting for them to come at you as opposed to kind of overtaking what's in front of you. But this thing does an amazing job of getting up and over everything in front of it. The DRX is always fighting to the surface, fighting to get its nose up, and looking for that steezy, perfectly flat boof. This thing 
it does good. And I didn't think that we would see another high quality, high performance round boat again. So, hey, displacement hulls aren't dead and it's a good thing. If you haven't tried something like this, try to get your hands on one of these boats. They are rare in the States. I've got this demo and then like one more, but if you can find one, they're super worth it. Hats off to Razi. Never thought I was going to be saying that. Good job. I hope that you guys have a successful future ahead of you and you make more stuff like this. This boat, I had all sorts of preconceived notions about and was very hesitant to give a fair shake, but it won me over. It absolutely is a winner if you are into this sort of thing. If you want to be all near knee staring, that, you know, original 9R, original Ripper kind of life, this wasn't going to be the boat for you. But if you're someone who's been around for a long time and you miss some of the stuff that just doesn't exist anymore since the 9R, this is it. And it could be your last chance. So, you know, grab them while they still exist. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.